I'm always interested in solar and solar related things. So when I came across this new uh, charge controller, I had to pick it up. This is the uh, Batteria Power 20 amp MPPT solar charge controller, this time on KMRD Radio Stuff. Let's hop on the bench, take a look at this, and then we will go outside. And I wanna compare this MPPT charger to my BioNO uh, PWM solar charge controller and see if we get any bit of difference. We're also gonna check and see, I've got my 7300 hooked up outside. We're gonna see, is this RF quiet and how much power do we get out of it? Now here's the whole shebang. This is everything we get. We get obviously the charge controller itself, a couple patch leads, some screws for perhaps mounting, and a user manual. Now what really drew me to this was, it's an MPPT charge controller, which should be more efficient. And it also does multiple chemistries. We've got gel, AGM, and lithium iron phosphate, which is what I use. So we should be able to uh, do just about any kind of uh, charging we would want with this. And here again, you can see some of the specs there and what it does uh, in a little, either do 12 volt or 24 volt systems apparently and it's auto switching. So that's pretty neat. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put some power poles on this and I wanna go outside. We'll hook up a 100 watt solar panel to it. It's a nice sunny day. Sun's pretty much right overhead. So I wanna see what we can do with this charge controller. All right, so here's the setup. I've got uh, my Big Geek battery box here and the way we're gonna compare this, I have the BioNO charge controller in here and uh, everything's, everything can go through this uh, meter, which is why I wanna do it this way. So I can actually plug in the charge controller to any one of these red and black ports and we can see uh, the charge controller going into there so long as this one's off, which is switched. So I can turn that on and off. So I'm gonna compare, I'm gonna plug in, I've got a 100 watt BioNO panel out there with going into uh, just a power pole lead. So I can plug the solar panel directly into here and use this charge controller and we can monitor the input uh, current and wattage and all that stuff going in here. Or I can plug that one into one of the red and black ones. So we'll be able to compare it that way. And then we're also gonna take, I've got my 7300 out here. We'll see uh, if this thing produces any uh, kind of RFI. We'll see if it's clean. And the way this charge controller works, I'm gonna plug in the solar panel here real quick. It's actually pretty easy. See now it's powered on. So we've got voltage and uh, amps there. We can push this button, that'll tell us the temperature in Celsius and Fahrenheit. And then there's these different error codes that uh, mean things when you read the instructions. So right now it's on gel. So if we just long press this, it'll start blinking. We can go from gel, just push this button once. We're on AGM. Now we're on LifePo4. Then we just long press this again to select it. Now we're on LifePo4 and then we're gonna select either 24 or 12 volts. I want 12 volts. We're gonna long press this again. And now we're set for lithium iron phosphate on 12 volts and there we can see uh, our standing voltage. So the first thing I wanna do, I wanna check the uh, MPPT controller. So we're just gonna plug it in to this port here. And once I flip this switch, that'll turn the system on. So we can see the voltage here, that should start going up. We see the amps in either milliamps or when it gets to amps, it'll change the amps and we can see the wattage here. So let's go ahead and flip this switch and we should see our current ramping up and we are. So our voltage is now at 13.3. We're getting uh, about 4.5 amps, 60 watts. We'll let this uh, sit for a second, see if anything changes. Now 13.4 volts. So it's doing the thing. Now let's take a look and see what we get now see, that's interesting, why is it doing that? It just shut off and now it's turning back on again. That's weird. And this, you can see the lights are, the battery's almost charged, it's 75% anyway. I think I've pulled, uh, well, I've, I've pulled about seven and a half amps out of this battery, amp hours out of this battery. So it is, there's a 30 amp hour battery in there, so it is, uh, about 75% charged in that area. So now let's take a look. So four and a half amps, 61 watts. Let's take a look at what the uh, pulse width modulation charge controller that's built in here will do and see if there's any difference. 
Now all I have to do is take the plug directly from the solar panel and plug it into uh, here. And then by flipping this switch, that turns this charge controller on. And you can see we're charging there by that little indicator in the middle. And let's take a look at what this is doing. So we're getting a uh, little less, 4.1 amps of current and 56 watts. So it is less, not much, but some. So it looks like the uh, MPPT is a little bit more efficient. Not by much though, I'm surprised. I would have thought I would have seen a little bit more out of this, but so now I wanna uh, do a test to see if this charge controller is RFI quiet. So we're gonna take a look at the radio with both. I'll start with the uh, BioNO panel. We'll plug that in and have the radio on, and then we'll plug in the new uh, uh, battery of power and see uh, if this is RFI quiet. We'll start with the radio off just so you can see. We are plugged in. The radio is plugged into this bottom switch there. We are charging, and now the radio is on. And if there were any RFI, we would see it on the scope. There is some uh, local noise here in the area, so this this is all that's all a clean spectrum scope. I don't get any any noise at all from this BioNO solar charge controller. So this is just to show you what a clean screen should look like. And now I'll go ahead and plug in the uh, battery of power and see if we get any noise from it. And again, same thing, the radio is off. You can see we're getting a little more power, 4.7 amps, 63, almost 64 watts there. And now I'll go ahead and turn the radio on and see if we get any noise from this thing. And we sure do. <laughs> all, all of those lines, those are all RFI. I wonder, let's change bands, see if it's any different on any other, uh, any other bands. So a little bit less on 40 meters, but it's still definitely there. I have certainly seen worse noise. There's 10 meters, 17 meters. 17 kind of always looks like that, but we're still seeing uh, some of these uh, lines here. 15 looks, yeah, I don't know what that is. That's probably from the charge controller. We can find out simply by turning it off. And let me unplug it. That could be local noise. So the charge controller is unplugged now. So that noise is local here. Now I just turned the uh, charge controller back on. It's ramping up in power there. So yeah, we're definitely, definitely seeing RFI coming from this charge controller. Not the worst I've seen, but so about every, every 20 or so hertz, kilohertz rather, We've got some noise, some hash. Not that audible. I don't know if it would really completely destroy your QSO, but yeah, it's definitely there. What a shame. So the good and the bad. Well, the good, it is an MPPT charge controller. We saw it is uh, a bit more efficient than the BioNO, which is a pulse width, modula uh, pulse width modulation. Say that three times fast. Uh, not as much more efficiency as I would have expected. This is actually my first time using an MPPT charge controller, so I didn't really know what to expect, but uh, not a lot in terms of uh, current and wattage. Uh, almost negligible now if you had a bigger array and larger solar panels, more power, uh, I'm sure those would compound quite a bit. But uh, also multi-chemistry, which is a great thing, AGM gel, and uh, LifePo 4, fantastic, 20, uh, 20 amps, which is uh, pretty much the same specs as the BioNO, but it makes noise. And it's almost twice as expensive as the BioNO. This one was uh, about $80, where the BioNO, uh, I think about 45 or 50, so uh, does it work? Yes. Would I use it for ham radio? Not while I'm operating, no. So there you go. That's why you buy the good stuff, I guess. And uh, that's why you watch KNMRD Radio Stuff. So, so thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you again on another episode of KNMRD Radio Stuff. 73, guys.